Welcome to the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss the exciting science behind HRV and how you can apply it to your own health and the work that you do. Just a note, this podcast does not replace medical advice, and if you're going to apply this to your own life or others, please consult with a medical provider. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another episode of the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. Uh, My name is Jeff Summers, co-founder of Optimal HRV with uh, my co-founder, Matt Bennett. Hey, Jeff. Welcome to another episode. How uh, how was Thanksgiving? Uh, boring. Uh, <laughs> we ate a bigger meal on Thursday. It was just my wife and I. So we, uh, we got the tofurkey uh, in there. Uh, don't knock it till you try it. And if you're not vegan, don't probably try it. But, uh, <laughs> and, you know, environmentally, uh, animal friendly uh, day at the Bennett House. So, uh, but other than that, uh, we just ate a little bit more on Thursday. What, what about you, my friend? Yeah, about the same. Definitely <laughs> different than your normal Thanksgiving as expected. But uh, yeah, I was talking you know, to my healthy. LA friends and uh, they said a million people went through LAX on uh, the Thanksgiving. Uh, I think it was the day after Thanksgiving or something. So it's like, oh, I was glad I'm not in that mess. So uh, yeah, yeah. for many reasons, even more this year. So well, that's it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm you know, surprised and not surprised. I mean, everybody's yeah gotten to the point where fatigue is really set in yeah and everybody wants to go about their their normal lives you know yeah almost there so, man the, the, the vaccines the vaccines are coming that's right just they're be good hit. for a little longer be they're good gonna, for a little longer that's all right the so. first shipment's supposed to hit denver in uh 10 days we'll I see know. if it's fda approved by then but uh we'll, we'll have it when it when it happens right absolutely that's it well, let's let's dive into it. So, you know, I brought up Thanksgiving because for the session today, we really kind of want to focus on um, helping people understand when they take time off. Um, it, you know, you, you sort of think of time off as or vacation or holiday as R and R, but a lot of people don't actually um, approach it that way. You know, so how can we take restorative time off? How can we ensure that the time we have away from work? away from whatever that's causing stress in our lives um, is restorative as opposed to the opposite, which, you know, I know I'm certainly guilty and a lot of people's personality traits lend them to being guilty of just adding to their potential stress load over a, a quote unquote vacation, yeah. then relieving it or recovering from it. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. Like most people think, oh, I'm away from work. My, yeah. uh, you know, my stress levels are, are way low. But that's not always the case. So, nope. you know, that's, uh, I think uh, it's an interesting conversation to have and good thing for awesome. people to think about. Yeah. And so like both of us uh, coming from a little bit time off and we thought this one and I, I just want to, before we preference this, I know, you know, a lot of our friends in the healthcare arena, when you talk about time off during the, the uh, I don't know if we're in our third wave, if we ever crash from the first wave, whatever we're in with COVID. I I always like in the holidays just to thank those that, you know, not every place shut down over Thanksgiving, not everybody gets uh, Christmas off. And that's just not the healthcare workers, but, you know, the folks keeping the homeless shelters uh, open, the residential treatment center. So uh, the long care, uh, you know, long-term care nursing home folks. So hospice, I know I'm missing a whole lot of people, but if you're, you're working over the holidays, you're putting your own health at risk for others, just know, uh, giving you big love from the trauma or the, uh, heart rate variability podcast. So I just wanted to say that because I know uh, us talking about breaks, uh, it's timely. And yet we, we've got a lot of heroes out there just just busting their butt every day. And this is for when you're able to take the break, my friends, yeah, which I hope exactly. you can really schedule that time off when we start to hopefully uh, get on the other side of this uh, damn pandemic. So with that said, I'm coming off the most boring vacation <laughs> I have ever had. And, you know, it was, it was, you know, and I got to admit this, I really don't want to say this out loud because I hate hypocrisy. It's the best thing for my life to be a self-care trainer because, 
you know, I'm not the best at self-care, but I hate hypocrisy. And I, I realized, uh, and part of this, you know, my in-person training business crashed. Uh, you know, it, it's been a it's been a, a challenging year financially. Not necessarily, I wouldn't even use the word difficult, but there were some difficult, uh, oh my goodness, how am I going to get through April sort of thoughts. And so I, I've been just trying to keep uh, my uh, occupational life on life support until it got revived. And luckily it has. But I hadn't taken much time off this year. Um, I had time off scheduled. We had a great uh, trip to Steamboat for snowboarding, Taos for hiking and snowboarding. And we, I owed my wife a big vacation this summer because <laughs> last year we wrote a book together. And so she reminded me I owe her a big time. So uh, <laughs> So, it, and then, you know, I, I got because, you know, the nonprofit world kind of shuts down a little bit. My world over the Thanksgiving week is pretty slow. So, so took the time off and it was interesting to watch my, my HRV through that time because I entered the, the uh, stretch not doing great. I was still, you know, keeping the green or high yellow most of the, most of the time, but I, I was trending uh, my week before Thanksgiving wasn't great. And then, you know, just really was left with, I could go on a run, you know, and I could, you know, we're not supposed to, I went on one hike, but I'm even cautious going too far, you know, out because I don't want to be spreading this or getting it and bringing it home. So, you know, there were some runs built in, um, but I was left to be in the house uh, most of the time. And so, you know, it was interesting to watch and really made me think about, okay, you know, took, probably worked out in that seven day stretch, probably about five times uh, throughout that stretch. And just to watch over the week, my HRV really recover. And, you know, it just kind of one made me appreciate that sometimes sitting on the couch and watching Netflix or uh, I had a friend, uh, my buddy Clint, I got a new Xbox, so I got his old one. So uh, played a lot of Far Cry 5, if anybody's interested, uh, which <laughs> probably played about 150 hours over the week uh, because I had nothing else really to do. Maybe a little uh, more than a little. Yeah, a little bit more. But, <laughs> but, you know, I track this too because, you know, this is kind of funny and this is, you know, how you can study yourself is I have this other game I like to play on uh, my laptop called Civilizations, which is an empire building game, takes like days to play. Um, and that really hurt my HRV when I played that game. I, I can't tell you really why, but it did. Far Cry, on the other hand, uh, really helped my numbers improve um, over the week. So who knows? Go figure. But, you know, when you're studying yourself, you get good things. So, but it also made me think about what would I have been doing if it wasn't COVID? And would I have had the same restorative uh, week? Um, now, I would have had a much more exciting week because I'd probably been up snowboarding. And so I, I really started to think about, Jeff, is what is my typical time off? And is that allowing my body, my mind to really recover from stress? Now, one thing time off does regardless, especially because I, you know, I'd say all my time off is with my wife. Socially, it's great. Um, usually, I'm, I might be traveling with friends. Obviously, it's good for my marriage uh, to, to spend time with my wife having fun. So, so, so socially, no matter what, what I do, it's, it's usually a, a real positive thing. But you know, you know, and I'll, I'll just be upfront, honest with everybody here. When, when I usually go snowboarding, and, and I'm getting old and cranky, so I don't want to sit in, uh, we call it <laughs> I-70 traffic here in Colorado, uh, because we don't like to pay taxes. So our roads are like 20 years behind the population. And, <laughs> you know, you can sit in three hours of traffic coming back from snowboarding if you take a day trip over the weekend, and it pretty much ruins any fun you've had uh, sitting in traffic. So I like to take like three or four day weekends a few times a year. And, you know, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll just, again, be honest is I, I, I like to snowboard, uh, you know, my, my saying, which I'm proud of after 20 years of doing this sport is, uh, you know, I love black bumps. Like I, I, <laughs> I love, I love moguls. I never thought I love moguls. I'm six, seven, my snowboard's way too big for moguls, but especially if there's some fresh snow on some bumps. Oh, I love it. But, 
you know, at the end, you're just exhausted. And, and the friend group that I go with, you know, there's a 1030 Bloody Mary break built into every day. So, <laughs> so, you know, we don't, we don't even make it to lunch and we start consuming uh, Bloody Marys. It's kind of a salad in a glass, but with a lot of vodka. <laughs> um, and that drinking really continues throughout the day, not to where I'm putting anybody on the slopes in danger, but, you know, then I have, I have a beer at lunch and then then the evenings consume way more than I would, you know, even on a normal Friday or Saturday. Again, I know I got to get up the next day, get my butt out of bed to go snowboarding again. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I found when I was measuring my HRV is I often wake up after the first day in red for, for the second day. Didn't stop me from doing everything all over again. But what I found was at the end of that, that four days, you know, mentally, I felt like some of the cobwebs from work had gone off, you know, being in nature, uh, getting some good exercise, being with friends. There's that positive side of that experience, but the additional consumption of alcohol, probably not eating quite as healthy as I normally do, really pushing myself physically, really took away a lot of that, that positive uh, benefit. And, and so, you know, it's important when we take these breaks um, as a way to combat burnout, stress, uh, spend time with family, is that we really try to, I think, acknowledge what we're doing that might actually be counterproductive. Um, one of the things I laugh at um, is that because I, I, you know, I, uh, you, you decide to do this, I did, is like <laughs> p p families traveling together with small children. Like, <laughs> You know, one of the reasons I didn't breed and reproduce is like I watched, I'm in the airport a lot. And I watch a family of four try to get through security with strollers. And, you know, and I, yeah, I know you do the same thing. You see the family of four, you go the other line, right? You know, you do not want to be behind the family of four going through security. And it looks like, you know, occasionally there's a happy family, but most of them look like they're ready to, you know, uh, murder their family before they even get on their trip. But, you, you know, so so it's like it's tracking this and flying is not the, the healthiest restorative practice, you, you know, either. I, I remember I took a trip over to Europe and was on a crammed flight back and, you know, I got home and I felt like I hadn't even been on vacation. And so. You know, as, as, as we structure this time off, especially in a time of where we just had a, a crappy 2020, right? A lot more stress for most of us than normal is how do you balance time off where you, you might be having fun, you might be drinking a little bit more, eating a little worse, maybe even exercising anymore. I, you know, I love to snorkel uh, and I can snorkel for hours and but it wears me out as well with some time to just give your body your mind a chance to recover and it's a, it's just a way to look at taking time off from a, a neurobiologically and a, a biologically psychologically uh, friendly perspective yeah i mean it's a, it's a topic that makes sense when you when you kind of dive into it um, but you know, on, on the surface, everybody just seems like, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to yeah. come back refreshed and ready to go. And, and what I've found personally, especially as I've gotten older, um, no matter what the vacation is, I need a day at the end yeah. to be at home. And yeah. I, I want, I want to sleep in, in my bed at home yeah. for one, for, for two nights before I start work. I don't want to come home on Sunday and at 6 PM, after a week of doing anything, right. whether it's snowboarding, whether it's whatever, even just laying on the beach, yeah. uh, you know, I still want that, you know, a full day on Sunday to, you know, yeah. get things right and a couple nights of sleep before I get, get after it again. And, and I would say, especially if you've had my kind of snowboarding weekend or, <laughs> or, or you, you, you get on an airplane. Cause I think mm -hmm. at some point we'll talk about business travel and flights on, on the podcast, but the, you know, throwing yourself up at what, 30,000 feet uh, in a canister with a lot of germs and a lot of people, not necessarily always uh, the, the healthiest thing. And then sometimes Southwest sure. gives me free drink tickets and you can't let those go to waste. So <laughs> then there's very few things worse for you than drinking uh, at 30,000 feet, but you know. 
What else are you going to do when you're it's up there? Free. It's free. It's free, yeah, and they will give it to right. you on the ground. So what's what's a guy supposed to do? It's it's, <laughs> it's a very tempting uh, uh, thing, but uh, yeah. Uh, that's, so that's so right. it's yeah, it's just to think about that balance, and, and I like your strategy that if you are going to really push is or if you're flying or you're flying with family and you know that there's some stress inherent to that give your body a chance to kind of breathe in the vacation so to speak and, mm -hmm. and not go to work you know not fly in at you know nine o'clock on a sunday and mm -hmm. jump back into work at seven on a monday um yeah. which is everybody's i mean you want to maximize the vacation if you're gonna go yeah. do it and then when i was younger i was that way i was like okay yeah. i'm gonna spend every moment i possibly can doing whatever it is i'm gonna go do yeah. And then as I got older and it became harder and harder on Monday morning to be productive. And as my Monday mornings needed to be more and more productive, you know, as, yeah. as my job role changed, um, I just realized it's not worth it. You know, yeah. it's a five day vacation on the beach is better than a six or seven day. If it yeah. means on Monday morning, I'm, I'm ready to go. Absolutely. The, the other thing that, that I see, and I think this is a challenge for a lot of people, and I'd love to see how you think about this, Jeff, in, in your world as well, especially being in sales is, you know, time away from work. You know, you know, I think that that's so important because, you know, I, I mentioned this a couple of times, this beautiful, amazing scientific breakthrough that I call my cell phone um, allows me to go on vacation and never really disconnect uh, from work. And, you know, what we see is that if you don't really, I like to think about it. If, if you, you know, as you know, Jeff, one of my favorite movies is the matrix. Um, <laughs> and, and they plug that thing into your back of your head. Well, you know, that I like to think about that as work stress. And, you know, every time you check into work, whether that's checking your emails on a Sunday, whether that's Monday, nine to five or whatever it is, you know, we, we, we're plugging into the stress of work. Like I said, 99% of us, our HRV at the end of the workday is going to be lower than it is at the beginning of the workday because the stress from work will wear on our system. That's that's work. You know, we don't call it like ah, rest Play. and relaxation. It yeah. is work. You know, it's like it's going to be lower after a run. Now, it doesn't mean it has to be lower the next morning, but, sure. you know, that, that stress we're going to experience. So so one of the things that, that I'm really worried about, folks, right now, and please hear that there's a difference of saying, hey, I'm going to extend my Mexico trip for a month. And two of those, I'm going to be working. And, and I don't, I'm doing air quotes and maybe I don't even need that. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to work too. But you're saying that, right? You're saying, okay, I'm going to take a week off at the beginning, at the end. And then two weeks in, I'm going to be engaged with work on the patio, looking over the ocean kind of thing. So, so it doesn't mean you can't do that. But if you're going on vacation, and you're looking at it as a restorative vacation. And hey, if you're a workaholic, why you're doing that is to bring your best self back after the vacation, right? So mm -hmm. you don't carry the burnout over with you. So even your workaholics out there, we're doing this to be as productive as we can when our come back. And I've got the research to show you take a vacation, you disconnect, you're gonna be more productive and more effective as a worker coming back from that vacation. And yet, even in the nonprofit world, where I would argue the the things aren't going to stop if you don't check your email. I don't care. You're not that important, uh, <laughs> you know. And you're important. Don't get me wrong. You're not that important, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you can. And I get on leaders all the time because they're the worst at this. Like, you know, if your organization can't run without the CEO, you're not a very good CEO. You, yeah, you, if you right. can't check out you need to really focus on your job and think about how you're doing because you're not doing something right if you can't leave for a week. Now, if the place does actually burn down, you know, give me a call. Uh, but, yeah, exactly. I'll pick the phone up, but I'm yeah, not- Don't email me in that case, but give me a call. You know, there's always can be that structure, but, you know, so often, even in, in my world, I'm getting these, you know, I'm, I'm on this Zoom call and I see, I, I see somebody's got the, like the beach in the background. And, and at first I think it's like your background. It's like, I know you're not in San Francisco right now, even though I see the Golden Gate Bridge. And then I like hear the waves and I'm like, you know, <laughs> so-and-so, are you, are you on the beach somewhere? It's like, yeah, I'm on vacation this week. And I just go straight into lecture mode. I don't care. Yes, you're my client. <laughs> I, you know, I don't care if you fire me. It's like, get off this. Like we are scheduling a training. You do not need to be on this call. And so, that is you, you know, I, 
it's that thing. But but I wonder, Jeff, like that that's the nonprofit world. I I have to chase people off Zoom calls with a stick, even if they're on vacation. I, I kind of wonder, like for for you, kind of what you see. Uh, do, do people ever disconnect? Because it it sometimes seems like, from my perspective. You know, if I email Jeff about a sales thing on a, a Sunday afternoon, I, I might expect you to jump back on and answer it pretty quickly. So, so I wonder what your experience is with this. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a problem for everybody. Um, I think, it, you know, in the sales capacity, you're working with customers. Your job is to bring revenue to whatever organization you're working for. You leaving doesn't change that. And the way the compensation is structured, typically yeah. you are compensated based on revenue that you bring into your organization. So even when you're on vacation, there's a personal um, motivation to get work done. And yeah. so, you know, if, if you see taking that call or jumping in that meeting means you're closer to getting a deal done, then yeah. you, that means you're closer to getting paid. Yeah. Um, typically most salespeople are going to do that. And so yeah. I definitely am guilty of that too. The vacations we take, I have to be very prescriptive about when I will allow myself to work and communicate that with my wife and family. Yeah. I do it as little as possible, but I don't remember the last time I went on a, a vacation and didn't have one or two or five work calls yeah. throughout the course of that vacation, depending upon the length of time. Um, yeah. And, and frankly, to your point afterwards, it's like, I probably didn't really need to be on that. <laughs> you know, there's been very, very, very few. Where I was like, I'm really yeah. glad I took that call. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's just the, the challenge of letting go of the control of letting go of, you know, the, the pride and in, in which you do, you know, you tie up in, in your work life and all that kind of stuff but it, it weighs on you. You shouldn't be looking at your calendar when you wake up in the morning on vacation. Right. Well, well, and, and, and you, you make a great point too. Your job is structured to reward you for doing that in many ways. And, and maybe I think we're, we're always, if you're kind of like us and you know, you're, you're highly motivated and, and you, and you, you enjoy achieving, uh, you know, professionally as well, you, right. you know, it's there, you're rewarded for doing that. And you might be looked down on by your organization if you don't. And I, I think that that's the real challenge because someone within a system is going to act how that system kind of expects them to and rewards them for acting or punishes them if they don't. I mean, the, the, the thing that I'm interested that leadership, uh, both in the nonprofit world and in the business world, just is not internalized is that's going to hurt you in the medium to long term. That's like, right. you know, there, there is a cost by not having figured out, okay, we know Jeff's an invaluable part of, of our machine, so to speak. Uh, you know, how do we keep Jeff as healthy and productive as possible? And no amount of research I've ever seen was Jeff needs to be on business calls while <laughs> he's on vacation. I mean, there's no research to, to, there's no return on investment on that. Now, if you close the biggest deal of your life, you, there, you, you could have sure. the exception to the rules, but, but you would come back from a true vacation uh, just, to, just more productive, more effective, making less mistakes, uh, more motivated, uh, less burned out. And, and it's just, it's fascinating to how we've, we've missed this. Because I'm old enough to remember if I went on vacation, you couldn't get a hold of me. Yeah, uh, then, yeah. Then you be, couldn't if you wanted to. You'd have to yeah, call the front desk pager, of the hotel. And, yeah, and yeah. I thought I was cool for 15 minutes with the pager. And, <laughs> you know, it wasn't like Sir Mix-a-Lot. It, it was like, <laughs> you know, so, so and so smoking weed in the bathroom at school again. Like, I always got those calls. But, uh, you know, drug-related calls, just not like Sir Mix-a-Lots. But, and, and if you don't get that joke, you probably shouldn't even Google it. But, uh, you, you know, it, but it, it's, that, it's that thing is like, when are we going? So, so with heart rate variability, what, what I'm interested in is that if we can help businesses show is, yeah, if we can really allow people, again, to unplug, because unplugging does, uh, I mentioned this in previous podcasts, unplugging does two things. 
One, it gives yourself a chance to fully recover. Two, you're not adding any more work stress into your system or the cup analogy we used to use. So a vacation, what it should do, um, we talked about a cup analogy where your cup's your capacity to hold stress and the water is the amount of cortisol. And you want a, a manageable amount of water. You don't want to overflow, um, being burnout, trauma, et cetera, et cetera, is to manage. So, so time off, whether it's in the evenings, whether it's a weekend, whether it's a vacation, as much as we possibly can. Because I know it's not always possible. If we can unplug, we're giving our psychology and biology a chance to recover. I unplug now and it's so easy not to because it's right here. And I'm mostly, I know with Optimal, I'm not a business of one, but you know, in my other job, I'm a business of one, you know, nobody else is answering my emails, but I've never had a client say you're not responsive. In fact, I hear the exact opposite thing because I can be on Zoom calls and see people's inbox, Jeff, Oh my goodness. Like, how do you have 400 unread emails? Like, how do you go? How do you live life right now? I have, let me check. I have one unread email. Like, like that, that's, and it that's just my came life. in during this podcast. Yeah, it <laughs> came in during this podcast. And so it's like, I, by being very efficient when I am at work, I, I keep my, like I went on a week's vacation. I came back. I had 200 unanswered emails. Um, now what I did, what I realized is like, 70% of that's probably spam I have to go through, you know, and it took a day to get recovered, but I gave myself that time off uh, to really do it. So one of the things I hope that HRB, as we, we look at incorporating these into business structures is, you know, what type of vacation time off is good for you? Because I'm not giving up my snowboarding weekends. I just might not call those. Rest- and you're not giving up your 10:30 a.m. Bloody Mary on your snowboarding weekend either. I, I gotta get a lot more data to to give get that up. Uh, uh, <laughs> so good. Uh, but yeah. So so I'm not I'm not I'm not there. And and there's there's a lot of positive I, I get from that because I love to snowboard. So so psychologically being in the mountains, it's beautiful. I, I love pushing myself physically. So so there, there's those psychological benefits. But I know coming back from that, you know, I'm going to be sort of fresh, but I'm not going to be, you know, it's not a restorative thing. So, you know, there, there's this idea of just kind of chilling on the couch, maybe taking long walks, but giving yourself permission to, I think we couch potato for a lot of us has got such this bad idea, yeah. but understanding that for a lot of us, a day on the couch watching Netflix, yeah, maybe go take the dog or go for a long walk and go for a three mile walk, but that can be the best thing for you. And so to give yourself permission also to, you know, hey, I'm just absolutely exhausted maybe sit on the couch doing some, what we've called active recovery, like walking, maybe a, a jog and a short jog, something like that uh, can be the perfect recovery. Watching the alcohol and drugs, um, eating well. I mean, those, if we're really gonna use time off to bring our best self back to work, um, you know, working in a few of those, maybe one of those three day weekends, even of that, a month, if you can, if you can work it in, uh, could make you a 20% better worker over the course of the year. And those yep. investments can pay off big time. That's it. That's right. And, and even just kind of restructuring the way you think about it. You know, if you're going to yeah. take a three day weekend, snowboard the first two, and then like you said, give yourself permission to do absolutely nothing at home on Sunday, yep. knowing that that's what's best for you. Yeah. You know, it's, that's actually what's better for you, even though, you know, you may not think of that uh, as being the case. It, it biologically is. And, and if you're tracking your HRV, you're going to yep. be able to prove it. Yep, you, you can. And, and I, I've been thinking like, my, and uh, I, I didn't get a ski pass this year for several reasons, but I'm like, you know, I kind of wonder too, is like, man, maybe a day off in between, because what I do, I'll have a four day weekend and I'll go hard day yeah. one, day two and day three. Like I have no legs left, like at 11 o'clock, even though like I want to get out there and go hard again. So maybe even a day off in between, yeah, exactly. you know, go snowshoeing, go, go, you know, and, and, and whatever you do on your vacations, you know, substituted in for mine, but you know, snowshoe is not the easiest thing, but go for a light snowshoe, you know, uh, may, maybe have one less. Walk around Breckenridge. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. you know, so, so give yourself a, a, maybe a day, 
within where you can have fun on vacation, but you know, you, you just kind of have that recovery day uh, as well. So, so again, be strategic with this. Great thing is HRV is going to give you data. Um, right. I, I think this means a lot more uh, to me now that I had HRV connected throughout this. And one last thing, Jeff, I, because I, I, my last trip was uh, I got to go to Aspen and that may sound like, man, Matt must be well into the HRV money to go to Aspen, but it was on the, <laughs> it was on my ski pass. So it was, it, it kind of felt like it's going to Aspen for free basically. So, so, and my buddy had a condo up there. So, so don't, don't think, you know, that that's the case, but <laughs> you, you know, it was funny because we were, we were in the middle of launching this company and uh, we were, I was learning the import business to get a bunch of HRV readers. So um, because the folks were on China time and I was trying to figure out how to get these readers into the country because we were going to launch with people before COVID hit. And, you know, I looked at that vacation and you could just see myself tank. So usually on a ski vacation, I, I kind of go down and then, you know, giving myself that, that restful, at least half day when I get home, I come back higher than I left on the vacation. This one, I was like 20% lower and that stayed coming in. I almost needed a three day weekend just to recover from that because I didn't get a chance to disconnect. And, you know, it just kind of really showed me is to, to inject, and that was a whole bunch of work stress for me because <laughs> I am not, I learned an importer exporter. Uh, <laughs> it always sounded fun on Seinfeld, never really knew what it was. It's like, oh, this is why people exist to do this. Uh, it's, you know, it, it really just showed me is I came back much worse off than that. And part of that, it wasn't the only thing, but part of that was I wasn't sleeping well. I was trying to be on China time, you know, all those pieces. So you didn't actually take the time off. You were yes, still working. And what breaks my heart, it was my last time on the board. Uh, yeah. Had you I, known then, exactly. I, <laughs> I would have. <laughs> you yeah, would have said. And, and we, we, we sat on those readers for because we our, our launch obviously has been delayed because of COVID they sat in my garage for, for um, several months. So uh, but, uh, <laughs> lesson, lesson learned. Uh. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Oh, good, good. I think this was a good conversation. It was definitely something that, that, you know, you kind of opened my eyes to. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized, you know, you're right. How many times have you come back from vacation saying, I need a vacation for my vacation. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, we need to stop doing that. The, the whole point is to get away and, and recover and, and feel our best and, and be ready to be productive and be excited about what we're doing. Absolutely. Not the opposite. Yeah, so, absolutely. And so it, talk, it's a challenge. Listens. Yeah, it's a challenge because your job might expect you to check emails. Yeah, I mean, th this is, this is going to be a pretty big paradigm shift for, I would say, probably the majority of industries, especially if you're kind of a salaried person who's, you know, kind of translates into your, you're always working, um, you yep. know, and so we, we need to really think about this because not, not only are we hurting our business self, but we're, we're not, you know, if I'm continuing injecting work stress in my vacations, I'm not fully present with what's going on and, and being with, you know, my wife, my friends, uh, those beautiful moguls on a powder day, uh, <laughs> the bloody Marys that need my full attention. So, you know, it's not just for us again, professionally, but it's also personally beneficial as well. Nope. Excellent. Another good session. Appreciate it, Matt. Always fun, Jeff. Everybody take right. care. Check us Thanks. out at optimalhrv.com. <laughs> Download right. the free audio book. Uh, great Christmas gift. You can pretend you paid for it. Send it to family <laughs> members. Uh, great stocking stuffer. That's uh, right. Yes. Say it's from but... Santa. Whatever, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do. <laughs> awesome, my friend. Awesome. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you're interested in more information about HRV, please visit us at OptimalHRV.com. Also, if you visit OptimalHRV.com, you'll be able to sign up for our email list and download our free ebook, Healing with HRV. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next episode.